Welcome to Bible 180, First Chronicles. This book is written after the destruction of Jerusalem, but it's actually a history of David's reign 500 years previously. The book reminds the exiled Jews that they were still God's people. God had been faithful, and when they followed Yahweh, he blessed and protected them, like under King David. It was Israel's sins that led them into exile. The first nine chapters are a genealogical record. It highlights their connection to Abraham, to the 12 tribes, the kings of Judah, the Levites, the Aaronic priesthood, and the temple musicians. Basically all the people, promises, and procedures that connected them to Yahweh. The rest of 1 Chronicles focuses on David's reign. David was mighty because the Lord Almighty was with him. He even had mighty men who performed mighty deeds. Men from all the tribes came to him, a far cry from the tribalism of judges and the rivalry recorded in later books. Indeed, many foreign warriors rallied to David and served him. Shockingly, the Holy Spirit even momentarily rests on these men. First things first, David wins back the Ark of the Covenant. Now a man dies touching this Ark, and David sees that God is truly present. This serves as a reminder uh, to take seriously all the forgotten about instructions regarding worship, including the Levites and the Aaronic priesthood. David and his mighty men record many victories, but the Lord turns down David's offer to build a temple. David was a warrior, but the Lord wanted a man of peace to build his temple. However, David does gather supplies and gold, organizing the management and running of the temple. In accordance with the Torah, only the descendants of Aaron, who was a Levite, could actually be priest. The other Levites had a variety of jobs, trustees, altar guild, treasurers, gatekeepers, and janitors. The sons of Asaph become the temple musicians and worship leaders. Ever since the conquest, things had been disorganized and chaotic, but King David, like Moses and Joshua, has them very organized, including officers over tribes and assigned army divisions. The book closes with temple preparations. David tells his son to be careful not to forsake the ways of the Lord, but to execute the temple plan that David had planned and prepped for. David encourages the whole nation to build this temple, and because of David's successes, the nation agrees. First Chronicles focuses on how great King David's kingdom was, which is probably especially exciting to exiles. The only way back to the good old days of David is by being faithful. It shows what God wants for his people and his kingdom. Yahweh wants peace. He wants a humble attitude like David. He wants the righteousness and trustworthy nature of his people to attract foreigners. He wants to live at peace and among his people. Jesus is just like David. He will be a faithful leader his reign will lift up the welfare and the well-being of the whole people of God, just as David's faithfulness had exalted and lifted up the whole nation of Israel. Israel and Solomon are in a really good place at the end of 1 Chronicles.